Welcome back to the lab, guys. Today, I will be going over VCSAs. You may be asking, what the hell is VCSA? VCSA stands for vCenter Server Appliance. So stick around. All right, so I'm gonna dive right in. To get started, I gotta first go actually where I downloaded the ISO. And what you're gonna wanna actually do is go ahead and actually go to VMware.com, sign into your account, go to your downloads, and download the ISO that is for the VCSA application. Sorry, the appliance, not application. But once you got it downloaded as I do here, here it is, the VMware VCSA 6.5. We're gonna go ahead and actually open it with Windows Explorer. This is actually gonna go over here, and if you notice, it actually mounts it, so this allows us to mount it. Next, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna to wanna to do the UI installer. Now, if you notice, look, they give us three different versions. We've got Linux, we've got Mac, we've got Windows. Now we're going to go ahead and open up the Windows version. We're going to go inside. Right inside, you see the installer.exe. We're going to go ahead and double click that. That's going to bring our vCenter Server Plants installer. Now, just so you know, the reason it's called VCSA is it stands for VMware vCenter Server Plants. VCSA, VCSA VMware vCenter server appliance right up here at the top all right so here's the installer I'm gonna go ahead and click install now if you notice we can go ahead and use the same installer to upgrade migrate and restore but for this video I'm gonna be going over the install options so we're gonna go ahead and click install start this process here we are in the introduction we're gonna be doing stage one right now which is gonna be deploying the appliance Stage two is once we're gonna actually, it's deployed, we're gonna go in and actually set it up and configure it. But to start off, let's go ahead and get it deployed. We're gonna go ahead and click next. We're gonna agree to the SIP, which is the customer, you know, end user license agreement. Next, we're gonna do our deployment type. Here's our vCenter server. We're gonna be doing it with the embedded platform service controller, all in one, just one condensed package right now, the easy, quick, you know, what most typical people are doing, especially when they're dealing with three, you know, or less hosts. Gonna go ahead and click next. This next part right here, this is where we're gonna be actually deploying it to. So here I'm actually gonna be deploying it to my DMZ host, which is dot 46. Gonna type in its username, oh, and password. Gonna go ahead and click the yes, let it go ahead and validate. Now next we wanna go ahead and what do we wanna call this? I'm actually gonna call this Bodhi-VCSA. There's our, I'm gonna actually type in our root password that I wanna use. Oh, I didn't fat finger it, all right. Now, here's the different deployment sizes. This is actually really cool that they allow you to do this using the appliance installer. We can actually choose, and if you notice right down here towards the bottom, it'll actually show us what sizes we wanna use. Now, for this case, in most lab environments, you'll just wanna do tiny, but you, you know, guys out there that got a ton of hosts and a ton of VMs, like here I only have Vive hosts, so I can work fine with Tiny and I really don't have a lot of VMs. But for those that are larger, you can go up, you can pick all the way up to extra large, you can choose extra large, you know, storage. And it's going to tell you exactly how much storage it's going to take up and everything for all of that and how many CPUs and memory. But for this point, I'm going to do Tiny with default. So we're going to leave everything in default, so I'm going to go ahead and click Next. I'm going to install it on my 7K drives now next this last part right here this is actually the network settings so for the system name it's gonna be this name the same sorry the same as the virtual machine name so bodhi-vcsa next is the IP address after that we're gonna be doing the subnet mask then the default gateway followed by the DNS servers, which can have a comma to separate them. Oh, looks like they want the fully qualified domain name here too. So I'm going to go ahead and once again, bodhi-vcsa.bodhi-dx.com. Now we're going to go ahead and click next. And now here's our review ready to complete stage one. This is just going to be the deployment. Once again, guys, this is just the deployment of the application. Sorry, the appliance. 
onto the host. Once it's actually deployed and it's accessible, then we'll go actually access it via its web GUI and we'll go through that process. But once this actually gets going deploying here and getting sent up to the host, I'm gonna kinda put some music on and speed this process up because it's gonna take a little while. All right, so I click finish. It's gonna go ahead and deploy appliance. And like I just got done saying, I'm gonna let some music play and just kinda let this record. But you guys go ahead and just kinda check it out and watch and I'll see you guys soon. All right, so now that that's done, you'll saw I had a few errors, not big deal. One of them was just not able to get to the management network and that's actually due to 
watch this, I'll let you guys uh, see here. For some reason, when I seem to deploy the VCSA, and it may be the same on your networks, whenever I go in and actually edit settings, it's on the wrong network. So I gave it an IP address for my Bode DX, but for some reason it's stuck on my office network, which causes it to have an improper IP. So as soon as I change that over, it's the first thing I always do and always check as soon as I can, especially if I get that error. The other thing to do too, guys, is make sure that you have a, uh, a name set in your DNS, especially on your uh, DCs and on your local DNS servers, that actually point to this beforehand, before setting everything up. Having an A name record already set up really helps and simplifies things moving forward. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and actually launch the web console here. So we're going to click it. If you notice, there's our IP right there. We're going to go ahead and actually go to it. Now, one of the things is, is that, oh, when you actually go to it, you need to make sure to type in, if you notice I've already been to this before, is the 5480. You need to make sure to type in, and you can see right here, let's see if I can get my mouse, because not, you'll actually see the 5480 after the, uh, f uh, the FQDN. So you have bodhi.vcsa.bodhi-tx.com, colon 5480. So the same thing's done up here. We can go ahead and click enter, and if you notice, now we're going to come up to the uh, cert. Since it's self-signed, we're going to go ahead and tell it to proceed and bypass that. And now here we are actually to the startup screen. Now I'm going to say once again, if you have not set up your DNS records and all that stuff, go ahead and set them up. Give it time to propagate before you set this up because it will go out and look for itself through an A-name record on your local DNS. All right. We're going to go ahead and, like I said before at the beginning of this video, We've got multiple different ways of what we can do. We've got setup, upgrade, migrate, and restore. I'm going to be keeping with the theme here and setting up vCenter. We're going to go ahead and actually type in our password and log in, just as we uh, did before. Remember, this was the password reset. So this is a stage two process. Just as before, we did stage one, actually deployed the system, got it up on the host. We're actually now doing stage two, which is actually deploying the vCenter server appliance. Well, not deploying, I should say, fully setting it up and getting all the items that we want set in settings, alerts, all the different services and such. All right, we're going to go ahead and click next. Now, if you notice, a lot of this information was already brought in from the original deployment. You can go ahead and tell it to synchronize with time with NTP servers. I'm going to tell it to synchronize time with the ESXi host. If you refer back, I have another video that actually tells you how and shows you how to show NTP, why it's best to actually enable NTP on your host and you know, what it does for you. Once you have that set, go ahead and click next. As you see here, it's going to go ahead and do a few more things. It does take a little bit of time sometimes saving the IP address with the prefix. Just let it do its thing. Best you can do. Best thing you can do a lot of times with these VMware things is just let it take its time. Let it do its process. All right. Now we're going to be setting up the vSphere single sign-on. I'm going to keep it very, you know, simple here. I'm going to go with. The, you know, default, here's local stuff, vSphere.local. It's the same as, you know, when you first set it up with Windows and things like that. If you've ever set up vCenter before, you'll notice the vSphere.local. That's done by default by them. I'm going to go ahead and set my password, which is something I always set to normal. And then I'm just going to do default site. Here, just keep it with the, you know, theme of doing everything as a lab. Going to go ahead and click next. Going to join their VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. All right, now to the final part, we're going to go ahead and review. Right here, it's going to go ahead and let us know what, what we're going to name it, what IP address, subnet mask, gateway, DNS servers, all of that, how it's going to be getting its time, everything right there. If we're good to go and we're happy with the settings, we're going to go ahead and click Finish. We're going to go ahead and click OK, and we're going to let it start its process. Now, if you didn't set an A name record, which I guess we're going to see here soon if I got everything right, It'll actually pop up saying that it can't process because it's not able to find the host through an A name record. So make sure, I'm going to stress again, that you get that A name record set before you get to this point because if not, it will fail, it will cause issues. So it's best just to take care of it now. That way you don't have to worry about it and have to deal with having to refresh and reboot and restart the whole process over because it actually can give you an error where it's going to ask you to redeploy the whole appliance and start from scratch again. You don't want that. that that's not fun. But I'm going to go ahead and let the appliance do its setup. All right, now, as you see, it's done. It'll pop up saying you're successful, and you'll actually get a link right down here if I hover over. I'll go ahead and open link and new tab. It'll bring us up. Here's the cert page. Go ahead and proceed, and boom. We've got vCenter. We've got a VCSA VC set up and ready to go.
two, I'm gonna choose HTML5. I'm gonna log in real, few, real quick for you guys. Oh, let me go ahead and finish that off. There we go. All right, and there we are. We're now logged in to our VCSA as the administrator. We've got everything basically read up. It's ready and set up, and we can start adding in hosts and actually put it in production. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you know this video helped you guys figure out how to deploy VCSA, or you know maybe you, you learned something. If I didn't properly explain something, maybe I didn't understand something completely. Go ahead and let me know below in the comments if you found this you know, video useful. Go ahead and toss me a sub and let me know with the thumbs up. Also, go ahead and let me know in the comments below if there's tutorials I gotta work on or you know anything you guys want to see out there that you know nobody else has really done tutorials on. I've been having a lot of fun doing this. I, I try to do it as often as I can, but. At times, it's, it's sometimes tough, and on top, honestly, at times it's kind of trying to figure out what content's best, so it really helps when the community says, hey, we want to see this, so drop down below what you guys want to see, and thanks once again for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the lab.